Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to take a look at topic 6.6, .6, which is called applying properties of definite integrals. So let's start with some properties of definite integrals. Some of these we've already talked about in previous videos, but now they're going to be official. We're now be able to use these whenever we need to. We're talking about definite integrals. All right, so the first one, the constant multiple property for integrals. If we have the integral from A to B of k times a function, we can simply take that k value and bring that k value out in front of the integral, thus making it k times the integral from A to B of the function. The additive property for integrals says if we are integrating two functions that are adding or subtracting inside the integrand, we can simply split that integrand up into two separate integrals, the first one of the first function f plus or minus the second function g. The additive prop interval property for integrals, so this one kind of gets confused with this. These two kind of get confused sometimes for each other. It's the same name except the interval is added in there. This one is when you have two or three or four functions. Okay, this one's when you have one function, but we're going to split that up into two separate parts. All right, so what do I mean by that? Just making up an example here. If we had the integral from 0 to 8 of x squared dx, right, we can split that up into the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared plus the integral of 3 to 8 of x squared dx. Okay, so that's just an example of how that might be used. Obviously, it's not something you would do in a problem like that, but it comes in handy when we're talking about a graph. And then finally, two special integrals that we just kind of need to remember this right now. Uh, the first one, if f is defined at x equals a, the integral from a to a is zero. Why is that? Well, think of this. Remember, this is length times width. We're just doing a lot of rectangles here. And if the integral goes from a to a, that means the width is zero. So it doesn't matter what the length is. If you multiply it by zero, we get zero. Okay, and this last one, a pretty important one here. If we have the integral from b to a, and let's just say, for example, b is bigger than a, and we don't like the way that looks, so, it, so b is 4 and a is 1. We want it to go from 1 to 4 instead of 4 to 1. We can switch the bounds by simply putting a negative sign out in front of the integral. Okay, let's take a look at how some of these are used. So the first one says, evaluate the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x plus 6 dx, given that the integral from 1 to 3 of just f of x is 10. So this is going to be that additive property for integrals right here, this one. We're going to split this up into two separate integrals. Okay, and this first integral, well, I don't know why I wrote 10 there, I meant to write 6, sorry, 6. So this first integral over here, we already know what that is. It's 10. That's why I wrote 10 in the last one. Plus, this, if you remember from our video about geometry, is just a rectangle of length 6 and width 2. So 6 times 3 minus 1, which is 6 times 2, or 12. So this would be 22. All right, for this next one, evaluate the integral from negative 2 to 5 of 3f of x minus g of x dx, given a bunch of this stuff that we know here. All right, so first of all, we can rewrite this using a couple different properties as 3 integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x dx minus integral negative 2 to 5 of g of x dx. Okay, now we don't know this value, but we know this here. So we're going to take a lot of different uh, properties that we learned here, and I'll explain them as we use it. So it's going to be 3, 3 times the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f of x dx plus the integral from 3 to 5 of f of x dx minus this we do know. 
the integral from negative 2 to 5 of g of x is negative 4. So minus negative 4. All right, so we're still not ready to solve this quite yet. We do know this is 6, so I can replace that with 6. But we don't know the integral from 3 to 5. We do know the integral from 5 to 3, so we can make this, we can change the sign here, make this minus the integral from 5 to 3 of f of x dx, and over here we have plus 4. So finally, we do know this is 3, so I can replace that with 3, and I get 3 times 6 minus 3 plus 4, which is 3 times 3 plus 4 which is 13. So we use a lot of our properties in that one problem right there. All right, the next slide here, we're talking about special circumstances with functions, areas under the x-axis. So we've talked about this a little bit as well in our previous videos. The figure to the right shows a graph of f. The areas between the graph and the x-axis are denoted by the values a and are the same size. However, the integral from 0 to a is above the x-axis, so we say that's positive, so 0 to a. We say this is positive a, but the integral from a to b is below the x-axis, so we call that negative a. Even though the picture just says a, we know it's below the axis, so it has to be negative. And here we just have a couple different transformations that we've, we've looked at probably in your pre-calculus course. Okay, if this is the function f here. If we have f of negative x, that's simply going to be some type of reflection. And if we have f of the absolute value of x, we have the graph as a reflection on the positive side of the y-axis there. Okay, some things might come in handy in the future. All right, example two says assembling areas. All right, we have this beautiful picture here of F. We know this is 15, this is 5, this is 7, this is 10. And thanks to this right here, we know that this is 3 from C to 0. And we're asked to answer these six questions to the left here. All right, so from 0 to E. So from 0 to E. Immediately, some people are going to think, well, that's 17, 7 plus 10. But that would be incorrect. Because remember, the 7 is below the axis, so it's negative. So it's going to be negative 7 plus 10, or 3. Second one, from B to D. So from B to D. Now, that's going to be negative 5 plus 3 minus 7, and that would be negative 9. From A to 0, the absolute value of F. So from A to 0, the absolute value of F. So really, we're thinking of F as this here, 15, 5, and 3. which would be 23. D says the absolute value of the integral from a to 0. So this time we don't flip anything over. We're doing the integral from a to 0. OK, and then we'll take the absolute value of that. So that would be the absolute value of 15 minus 5 plus 3. So that would be 18 minus 5, which is 13. Absolute value of that would be 13. All right, so big deal here to understand the difference between question C and question D. Question C says we're going to take the absolute value of every individual area, but question D says we're going to take the absolute value of the ending area when we're done adding them all together. Question E, the integral from 0 to B. All right, so this is what we talked about with that one property where we can flip it by going from B to 0 and making it negative. So negative B to 0 so it would be negative. And the integral from b to 0 would be negative 5 plus 3. So it's negative, negative 2, 
or two. And then finally, the integral from A to E. So starting to ending here. That's going to be 15 minus 5 plus 3 minus 7 plus 10. And that would be 28 minus 12 or 16. Last one, example three, integrating a function with a discontinuity. Sketch and shade the region depicted in definite integral. All right, so from negative three to the left, we're graphing the line negative two x plus seven. Sorry, from positive three to the left. So if we graph that, that would be a y-intercept of seven and a slope of negative two. All the way until we get to three. And then to the right of 3, we're graphing the line y equals 4. So we're trying to do the integral from 0 to 5. So that would be... That shape there, whatever that would be. All right, so what we can do here is we can break this up into two integrals. So the integral from 0 to 3 of f, because we recognize that as a trapezoid, plus the integral from 3 to 5 of f, because we represent that with a rectangle. All right, so the trapezoid would be 1 half, the height would be 3, its bases would be 7 and 1, and the rectangle would be simply 2 times 4. All right, so this would be 3 times 8 over 2, or 3 times 4, which is 12. And the second one, 2 times 4, is 8. So the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx is 20. All right, that's it for our look in the topic 6.6. .6. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for tuning in.